Hey, this is Noel with creationeffects.com and this is the tutorial for using Creation Artifacts for Adobe After Effects. Creation Artifacts allows you to convert your footage into authentic looking animated artwork. And it comes with over 50 artifacts, which means you can choose virtually any artistic medium you can think of for your video. So that includes lots of pencil and pen drawing styles and painting mediums as well as a lot of creative and more unusual mediums like halftone effects, chalkboard, whiteboard, graffiti, claymation, 8-bit animation, fabric, Legos, paper cutouts, ASCII art, charcoal, pastels, and a lot more. It's very easy to use too. You just uh, drop in your footage and then you can export any of the effects. And if you want, each comp has a control layer with dozens of customization controls so that you can edit the outlines and the colors and the level of detail and just really get a lot of different looks with each medium. And I should mention that it also works just as well for photos and text because even on a still image, the textures are going to continuously change. So it will give it a, a nice animated quality. This has been one of the most popular templates at creationeffects.com for a long time. And 10 years later, it's still popular. And uh, even though I've been doing nothing but After Effects for the last 15 years, uh, my background before that was in art. So this was kind of a combining of my passions. And I just finished updating it, so it has some new artifacts and lots of improvements. And I decided to redo the tutorial. So it's 2024 and this is the updated tutorial. And let's get started. All right, first off, to open that zip file that you downloaded, uh, if you're running Windows, you can right click it and look for the extract all option. That's a safe way to open it uh, so that you don't get a missing files error in After Effects. If you're on a Mac, you can just double click it. And you can see there's an HD version and a 4K version uh, for the template. They're identical except for the resolution. Um, I'll just open the HD one just because it'll preview faster. So I'm going to go through the process of choosing and customizing an artifact for my footage, showing you all of the template features along the way. So when you open the template, you should see some instructions here and uh, make sure that your effect controls panel is available as well, because you'll need that. Uh, just go to the window menu and effect controls. And the first thing to do is import your footage and place it into this, your footage comp at the top here. This will automatically put your footage into every comp so that you can preview or export each artifact with your footage. So go to File and Import and File and I'll choose my clip and I'll drag it in here. And this is just a short stock footage clip of this girl singing and she looks kind of angry and that's, I get it, you know, I grew up with rock. Uh, before hip-hop took over the world, but anyway, this would be a good time to adjust the brightness of your footage. Many of the artifacts won't work as well unless you have good dynamic range, uh, so that the brightest parts are pure white and the darkest parts are pure black. So you can do that with a levels effect. So basically this histogram is telling us this clip is a little washed out. There is no information in the shadows on this side and there's no information in the highlights over here. So we'll just drag these arrows inward to where that waveform starts on both sides. And if your footage looks a bit dark overall or overall too late, uh, you can move this middle arrow to make it more balanced. I'm going to brighten my footage up a little like this. Now, if you open this first folder called Artifacts, uh, you'll see lots of different folders inside, and each one is a unique artifact. A few of these folders even have multiple presets inside them that are unique, so uh, there's really a lot of options here, and, and maybe you don't know which one you want to use. Well, there's a couple different ways to preview the effects uh, to help you make that choice. First, uh, the quicker way to see all of the effects in action is to go to the link in the description at the uh, Creation Artifacts webpage and uh, scroll down until you see the video called Creation Artifacts Preview. And that will show a few seconds of each effect on the same footage so that you can compare. 
Or if you want to preview the effects with your own footage, uh, you'll see this Artifacts Preview Comp. And just open that up and you'll see all the effects in there. So you can see if I just unhide a layer, uh, I can see what our footage looks like in every medium. There's charcoal and graffiti, halftone dots, here's a Monet, and here's one of my favorites, uh, mixed media. Now, some of these have a layer comment that says set comp resolution to full for an accurate preview. Um, depending on what effects I used in these comps, changing that preview resolution here uh, can have a dramatic effect on how the effects look. So you can lower the resolution here to make it run faster, but um, keep that in mind. It will look different from your final render. Okay, I've decided that I want to use this pen drawing effect on my footage here. So I'll open the folder, and I'll open the main comp in there. And you can see that our, our singer converted to this really nice animated pen drawing. Uh, this comp is 10 frames per second to give it that choppy stop motion look. If you want to change that, you can just go to your composition settings panel and adjust the, the frame rate. Anything over 15 is going to look really uh, chaotic and fast. If you need to export it at a higher frame rate, like 24 or 30, what I recommend is to keep this comp at a low frame rate and then put this comp into a new comp. And that new comp can be whatever frame rate you want. And then you can export that. But um, if you're happy with these default settings and you like the look of the animation, then this is ready to go. Uh, you could render this comp as it is. Or if you want to play around a little, you can customize it using the control layer. But before I get into that, let me explain uh, the rest of the contents of this pen drawing folder. You'll see this pre-comps folder inside every artifacts folder. And uh, inside, you'll always find another your footage comp. And if I open that up, uh, it's already got your footage in there by default. This is just the main your footage pre-comp up here. But each effect has its own separate your footage comp so that you can put something different in here if you want uh, to try a different clip or I've never actually tried this, but you could even put another artifact comp in here and basically combine multiple artifacts. As for these other pre-comps, uh, these are dynamic textures. Dynamic textures are an important part of the template and they're kind of the magic ingredient that makes the effects look authentic because they use real hand-painted or hand-drawn textures. Um, each of these dynamic texture comps take one or more high resolution images and they rotate and move and flip and blend them together in random ways so that no two frames will ever look the same. So for this pen drawing effect, I've got several pen strokes textures here. And I've put them on this sketchpad paper texture. And then I use this fingerprints and smudges texture as, as an overlay over the whole thing. We'll take a, a closer look at dynamic textures in a bit. Uh, let me go back to my pen drawing comp. You can see at the top here, there's this instructions layer. And if you unhide that, you can find helpful info on how the effect works, as well as some instructions for customizing. And also note that many of these layers will have these layer comments as well. So you can just expand this column and expand the layer uh, to read it all. Okay, to start customizing, I'm going to select the control layer, and then in my effect controls panel, there are all these slider controls which I can use to customize the look of the drawing. Each artifact is going to have different controls, uh, so if you're ever confused, just read that instructions layer, because it usually gives a, a rundown of the controls and what they accomplish. Now, I'm not going to go over all of these, it would take too long, uh, but most of the artifacts give you an option to use an outline. You just check the box and you can customize the lines with the controls. There might also be a checkbox to use uh, the colors from your footage. So we could turn this into a colored pen drawing. And there are usually some controls that will adjust how much of the texture you want to see. They're usually named threshold. And at the bottom, you're always going to see these texture speed controls. Um, I just added these because for 10 years, people have been asking me how to slow down the textures, or how to make the animation less jittery, or less flickery, or just less chaotic. So you can, you can think of these as chaos controls, I guess. Um, 
There's a, a texture speed control for each dynamic texture. So for the paper and for the pen strokes. And if I turn those down to about 15%, you'll see that the, the pencil strokes and paper doesn't change on every frame anymore, but rather the images kind of fade into each other. If I wanted the paper not to change at all and just be a single image, I could just set this to zero. I'll undo that because I like chaos. And then we also have the stop motion effect control. The stop motion effect is on this layer here. And you'll see this layer in every artifact, and it helps make the animation look more handmade instead of just another boring video filter made with software. The idea is uh, it makes it look like you did a real painting or drawing, took a photo of it, did another drawing, took a photo of it, and so on. So each photo might have a slightly different position and zoom and rotation and exposure. And uh, you can make it as subtle or as obvious as you want with these variation controls. I personally like the look of a, a sort of crude, homemade animation. I think it adds to the authenticity. But uh, if you want it to play completely smooth, you can always just turn this layer off. Or if you go to your stop motion effect control here, uh, you can increase or decrease all of those variation controls together with this one control. Now, what if you want to change the look of a texture, uh, like this pen stroke texture? Because there aren't any controls for that on the control layer. Well, that's because all the controls are inside the textures pre-comp. So I'll open up my pre-comps folder again, and uh, there are multiple copies of the texture here uh, with varying degrees of brightness for covering the different areas of your footage. And I'll open one of these so you, you can see this one has a couple copies of the same pen stroke image here composited over each other uh, using the multiply blending mode. I could duplicate one of these if I wanted and uh, it makes it darker. But uh, let's say I wanted to make these pencil strokes smaller and make my drawing look more detailed. To do that, I'll go to the slider controls on the control layer. So you can see there's a few options here for customizing the look of the texture. Um, I've actually got most of my randomized controls switched off here because I wanted the strokes to stay neat and parallel. Uh, but you can see if I turn on random rotation, for example, now I've got a, a crosshatch look going on. I'll keep the parallel strokes and I'll turn down the scale here to get smaller strokes. Uh, they were already pretty small at 60% scale, but I'll bring it down to 30%. And now if I zoom out, there's a problem. Uh, the edges of these images are showing. If I scrub forward, you can see these layers are constantly wiggling around and they're wiggling too much for their size. So there's a couple things I can do. Uh, we have this extend edges control, which is already uh, tiling the images using a CC repetile effect and extending the edges out 4,000 pixels in each direction. I'll turn that up a bit. Um, I wouldn't overdo that one, or After Effects might get angry with you and give you an error. But uh, we also have this position wiggle amount. I'll cut that value in half to a thousand pixels. All right, after doing that to all the pen stroke textures, we get a cleaner, more detailed drawing now. So that's how you edit the texture. Uh, but what if you wanted to completely switch out a texture with another one? For example, you may want to change the paper texture to something else. Um, I'm going to close this folder so you can see this dynamic textures folder here. In this folder, you'll find a bunch of different textures. Uh, some are made from the different art mediums like oil paint or charcoal. Some are art surfaces like paper and canvases. And then some are patterns or just miscellaneous stuff. Um, I'll open this Art Surfaces folder and I'll look at my paper options. I want to replace my clean sketchpad paper with something with more texture to it. So I'll go with the, the old paper texture here. Now in most cases, if you just delete a layer in here, you'll get an error because everything in here uses expressions and all the layers are referencing other layers. So there's a better way to swap out layers. Just select a layer you want to replace and then hold down the Alt or Option key, Alt if you're on Windows, Option if you're on a Mac, and drag the item from the project panel into your comp. So that'll preserve all of the effects and settings and expressions of the layer, and it just changes the source file. 
So it's best to always use that method uh, to keep everything working correctly. So that looks nice. Uh, but say I want to go even further and give this old paper kind of a crinkled look. Well, I'll open up the old paper comp. Um, the quick way to do that is just double click the layer. And now I need a crinkled paper image. So I'll, I'll close this folder and I'll go to my texture image files folder. And these files are what all the dynamic textures are made from. There's about 500 high resolution texture images in here. Um, I'll open the art surfaces folder and there's a couple options for crinkled paper here. I'll just select the first one. And so now in my old paper comp, I'll uh, duplicate this layer and replace it now. So I'll hold down the Alt or Option key and swap the source file. And I'll change the blending mode to multiply to combine the two textures. And it's kind of dark now, so I could go to this optional effects layer here and uh, there's a brightness and contrast effect in there where I can increase the overall brightness. All right, and one more quick texture swap uh, if you want to get creative. I'm going to mix mediums a little bit I'll go to my dynamic textures and um, let's say you want to add some marker to your animation. I'll select one of my pen strokes textures down here. Um, I'll select pen strokes medium light. I'll hold down alt or option and I'll swap those out. And I might decrease the opacity a bit. So here's the marker texture isolated and mixed with the pen strokes. All right, let's take a look at this comp up here uh, named Copy and Paste Effects. There's some optional effects in here, uh, like if your artifact doesn't have an outline and you want to add it, you can always find that in here. Just copy and paste it into your comp and put it above the other layers. Or add color from footage. Um, the stop motion effect is here as well. And uh, some other ones uh, you can explore. Uh, you can just turn them on to see the effect that they have over your footage. Uh, most of these will have some customization controls on the layer. And there are also some animated border frames. Um, you can double click any of these and customize them on their control layer. Kind of like a, a comic book look. Or uh, some animated mats um, that imitate different mediums. So these will let you limit the drawing to a smaller area. And probably the easiest way to use these is to copy the layer. And then I'll go to my pen drawing comp and I'll hide just that paper or canvas layer. And then I'll put the entire pen drawing comp into a new comp. And I'll paste my animated mat in there. And I'll set a luma mat for my uh, pen drawing layer. And now I can bring in that paper texture and I'll put it down here and change the blending mode of my drawing to multiply. And if you wanted, you could double click the matte layer to open it up and uh, you could use the controls to customize the strokes to make it more closely match uh, the artifact or the medium that you're using. So I, I could change the angle of these strokes so that they match the angle of the pen strokes. Um, and if I wanted to change the shape of the matte, I can just edit the shape of the mask on each of these layers. I'll isolate one layer so you can see. It's a, this is an enormous template and there are a lot of features I didn't cover, so you'll just have to explore it. Um, I think it's easy to use, but uh, every artifact works a little differently. Um, they don't all use the same setup, so again, if you ever get confused, read those instructions layers and the layer comments. Um, if you are an After Effects person and you haven't been to creationeffects.com yet, then you need to stop screwing around and get over there because there's a whole page of really useful free stuff for After Effects. Free presets and free effects that you can download. And then if you browse the site, you're gonna see some really fun effects that are easy to customize and can save you a lot of time. The latest is the Space Effects package for making all kinds of space animations and After Effects like black holes and a very realistic sun and nebulas. And there's also Landscaper, which is a template for creating custom 3D landscapes. It has all the elements and nature effects that you need to create just about any kind of landscape you can imagine. And it has an automatic sky and lighting, and you can add water to your scene. There's also a template called Creation Trippy Effects, which is for adding all kinds of trippy looks to your footage. It's kind of like this template, but trippy. 
Um, and you can also make a lot of trippy, mesmerizing animations with it as well. Another popular one is the Critter Collection series, which includes flocks for making custom flocks of birds for your videos, or swarms for making swarms of insects, or schools for making schools of fish and underwater scenes. Another recent one is Shapeshift, which lets you make some mind-bending 3D transitions for your videos. Those are just a few of the effects at the site, and the link is in the description. Don't forget to like uh, if you want to help me out, or subscribe if you want to help yourself out. Uh, that's all I got, so thanks for watching.